Loren, can you um, talk about some stories that you've been following, too, about people who work in the airline industry? There's been some strange things that have happened to flight crews and pilots since Fukushima happened. Yes. Very early on, the Comprehensive Test Ban Treaty uh, verification sites, monitoring sites, stations that are all over the world, reported that the entire air column, this is from the surface of the ground up into uh, lower orbital space, is was contaminated with radiation from Fukushima. And that was, that was just uh, a month or two after Fukushima occurred. And then not very long after that, um, flight crews on Alaska Airlines were complaining, and they still are, of nosebleeds and strange rashes and um, other illnesses that were hard to explain, uh, Not just not feeling good. Hair, oh, their hair was falling out. And uh, just... Uh, not very long ago, a couple months ago, in early 2013, uh, two pilots for Alaska Airlines just passed out flying the plane. They, Of course, they had a co-pilot to take over, but uh, that's pretty unprecedented for a pilot to just pass out while he's flying the plane in mid-flight. And um, so that that I've been warning people not to fly across the Pacific Ocean. It's better to fly south into Mexico or South America and then go across the the South Pacific, uh, south of the equator. And some people have been following my advice and doing it. And um, I know I take my Geiger counter on the airplane. Everybody today needs to have a Geiger counter they carry everywhere with them. Uh, you just have no idea where where the radiation is. And if you have a Geiger counter, you can leave that area. If you don't know, you're just going to be staying there and, and you become exposed. Um, in the last six months, I live in Berkeley, California. I have been re- reading the... Um, the student newspaper for UC Berkeley, the University of California at Berkeley. And beginning in about October, I noticed that uh, almost every week in the student newspaper, there was a front page obituary on a student who just dropped dead uh, with no explanation. These are new graduates or students who have not graduated yet. I have a master's degree from Berkeley. I can't ever remember even reading an obituary on the front page of any student newspaper and until now. And one of the, uh, one of the ones that I knew was, was caused by radiation exposure to the, the Fukushima disaster was about two months ago in early 2013, when a young woman student, an athlete, just dropped dead with no explanation. And she had gone for the summer to Hawaii to do her sport. And also she had done, the the uh, article mentioned she'd done a lot of surfing there while she was there. Well, uh, when I was collecting the data from these comprehensive test ban treaty stations all over the world, they were reporting that the radiation levels, especially the radioactive iodine levels, measured in Hawaii were as high as they were in Japan where the disaster occurred. So this poor young woman unwittingly went to Hawaii, and um, unfortunately she was in radioactive paradise, but um, she certainly did pay for it with her life. So um, young people who are dying, it's it's even more upsetting. At least uh, an older person has had their life. They've had their children. 
Um, it just seems like the young people are being turned into to radioactive fodder. I can't imagine this ever happening in, in world history. <laughs> 